<sighs> okay, so what's going on everybody? This is your boy D. Sebastian Alexander Bonet, but you may call me His Royal Highness. And welcome to another, 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 another episode of Royally Fucked here on YouTube. Um, and on Anchor, um, my podcast. So, um... It takes a special bitch to murder their nephew. If you have not heard, uh, James Timothy Norman, you may know him. I never watched his show, but he is from the show Sweetie Pies. They used to come on own. Ms. Robbie, everybody call her Auntie Robbie, who owns Sweetie Pies. She was one of the original Ikets that got out with her life. Um, and she took her money, she was a singer outside of that as well, um, and took her money and created this restaurant, this brand. But, as of August, what day is this? August 18th, two good days ago, James Tim Timothy Norman, but everybody call him Tim, uh, was arraigned and arrested on federal charges, bitch, not local, not state, but federal uh, charges and being held in the Madison County Detention Center. Norman was charged with conspiracy to use interstate commerce facilities and the commission of a murder for hire resulting in death, i.e. a cell phone. So I'm gonna break it down for you real quick. Long story short, for whatever reason, it has not come to, it has not come to uh, full fruition of why this took place, but the FBI, the feds, were tracking this and investigating this story. Um, but it is alleged that James Timothy Norman killed his brother's child, Andre Montgomery. Now, Andre Montgomery is the second because his daddy, who was also murdered, um, is named Andre Montgomery as well. Ms. Robbie, per, per Google, has two children, Tim Norman and Andre Montgomery. And the, the, the baby Andre Montgomery is her grandson. So. Sequence, I'm not going to read this because I don't want to read it, go too far into uh, like just reading. But long story short, Tim Norman took out a $450,000 uh, life insurance policy on his nephew. Why? Slightest idea. I didn't know you can take out policies on people that were not your direct descendants. Now maybe because his brother has was deceased and from what I understand based on Google, that was the only child that his brother had. Maybe he was trying to set him up. I don't know why he took out that large of a policy on his nephew. It ain't like the nephew was a rapper. It ain't like the nephew was coming up. Yeah, you saw him on the show. Yeah, you saw him graduate on the show. But he was he was not a celebrity. I was about to say he ain't nobody special. But I don't want to degrade him, especially in death like that. But he is not a celebrity or a household name. So I don't know why you need... A four hundred and fifty thousand, uh, four hundred and fifty thousand pol, four hundred and fifty thousand dollar policy, especially on an eighteen year old or whatever, right? So, long story short, uh, he put this together with a stripper named Terica. What is her name? A stripper named Terica Ellis, but she goes by the name of Alexis the Great. Now, bitch, I didn't see any pictures of this whole. I ain't nothing great about her. She is from what Memphis, I believe. Memphis, uh, Tennessee. Honey, long story short, federal authorities allege that in 2014, Norman obtained a $450,000 life insurance policy on his 18-year-old nephew, Andre Montgomery. Norman was the sole beneficiary, not his mama, not nobody. I guess, again, his mama, but his brother was already dead, so I don't know who else would else be the beneficiary or whatever. Uh, in the days leading up to Montgomery's murder, Ellis told Montgomery... Uh, that she was coming to St. Louis on March 13, 2016, the day before Montgomery was murdered. Norman flew from St. Louis, Missouri from his home in Los Angeles, California. On March 14, 2016, Ellis and Norman communicated using temporary burner uh, phones activated that day. Ellis, who also used a temporary phone to communicate with Montgomery, and learned his location. Immediately after learning Montgomery's location, Ellis placed a call to Norman, right? So, for whatever reason, they are in um, St. Louis, Missouri. 
Apparently that is where Andre lived, right? Uh, Norman flies the in. Uh, Tarika is there. They communicate. And what I don't understand. I don't under. First of all, what I don't understand. The y'all must not have looked at First Forty Eight. Y'all must not have seen Law and Order. Y'all must not have seen these shows. Like I know how to kill somebody. I thought about this thoroughly. Like purging people. Like the purge. Um, but. You do know, we do know, people should know that yes, that these are our cell phones, yes, we pay these bills, but these are tracked. That location that we de depend on for GPS on our phones, for Google Maps and, 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 uh, and what is it, Waze and all that good stuff, they, they, they track our location. And when we use the call, even when the location is not on, when we use our cell phone, they are able, it's called pinging. They are, we are pinging off of a tower. And so when they, when, God forbid, if something happens to us, if we go missing, the police will pull, pull the lugs. I watch, I, Law & Order SVU is my show, bitch. They will pull the lugs to your phone and figure out what towers you pinged off of last and canvas that area. And depending on um, the area, they can literally narrow that down to blocks. So in this article, it goes on to say, that they ping Norman and Ellis, the stripper, on the same tower in the same block. So that means it would lead you to believe that they were together somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it goes on to say that Mama Ellis was negative in her bank account. But all of a sudden she came up $9,000. Ellis made transfers into her account. And people don't understand. Bitch, you know why her transfers are trackable, right? Cash App. Trackable, Zelle. Tra Why do you think Zelle is around now? A lot of banks are not allowing, like, back in the day, I can go to my ex-boyfriend account. As long as I had his phone number and name, I mean, account number and name, I can deposit cash into his account, deposit the money, or deposit shit. A lot of banks now are not allowing non-bank, non-members of their bank to deposit cash into another person. They're trying to track where is it, is it being embezzled? Is it being like they're trying to track it? That's why a lot of banks go with Zelle because that is a trackable means. So I don't understand when people say they are wiring money or London. all of that shit is trackable. So he wired her uh, over the course of a couple of days, totally nine thousand dollars into her negative account, right? Um. Let me go on, because I'm having a brain fart because I've been drinking. Um, around 8 p.m. that same day, Montgomery was shot and killed. Ellis' phone location information places her in the area of the murder at the time of the shooting. They pulled your lugs, bitch. They pinged you. I, no matter if it's a burner phone or your phone, bitch, they can, they can find you. On March 25th, Norman contacted the life insurance policy and attempted to collect the life insurance policy he had obtained on his nephew. Terrica Ellis was also charged with charged by uh, compliment complainant with conspiracy to use interstate commerce facilities, i.e. the telephone, and the commission of a murder for hire resulting in debt. Uh, the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Homicide uh, Section of the Federal Bureau of Investigation are investigating these charges. So I went on to dig a little farther, right? Because I took notes, right? Oh, that's good. I took notes. Four days after the murder, he tried to collect on the $450,000. First off, the body ain't even cold yet. The body ain't even in the ground yet. And, and for me, again, as most people, that's a dead giveaway. Most people will be grieving, grieving. If you know you got this policy, bitch, you know you're going to get the money. Why are you trying to collect it four days after you ain't had the funeral, you ain't grieve. And I know, and I know grieving is a process, so I'm not saying, bitch, you grieve one day and you're done. But the normal things that one would do, being that his brother is gone, or his dad, his brother, or Andre Jr.'s daddy is gone, you are the closest, and Ms. Robbie are the closest things to him. So that means setting up funerals, doing this, getting suits, programs, all of that, and you are trying to issue a, a claim on the insurance 
four days afterwards, right? The kicker is they denied the payout of the claim because uh, allegedly he was supposed to, re they were requesting important documents from him that he never provided, i.e., why are you taking out this much, $450,000? Why on an 18 year old? Why on your nephew? Are you the, you know, and I'm, I'm guessing, be, and I don't know how this normally goes, I'm, be, I'm guessing that would be his direct, I guess the next to kin because his father is deceased. So his father's brother, there's only two of them, will be his next of kin, I'm guessing. Or would it be his grandmother? I'm assuming that it would be his daddy's brother. It wouldn't, does it doesn't go straight up of next of kin or the next bloodline over the next generation? That I don't know. Drop down in the comments and let me know. So long story short, they were requesting documentation. Been requesting it. He never sent it. Are you power of attorney? Is there something? Why did you do this? I'm assuming, right? He never sent it. So they denied the claim of the 450. So you did all of this to still not get any money. Ironic. All right. It also goes, and this is coming from the Daily Mail, it also goes on to say a year prior to him getting this claim, another he went to another insurance agency and tried to take out a $250,000 policy on said same nephew. At that time, if you think about date-wise, because that $450 policy that was taken out was taken out roughly a year in advance. So that means you took out a policy roughly on a 16 to 17 year old. Why did you take out a policy? The baby wasn't, and I'm guessing that now that I'm thinking about it out loud, that might be some of the paperwork that they were requesting. The baby was killed at 18 years old, right? So if that policy was taken out a year in advance, he had a minimally was 17 years old uh, maximally 16 years old, depending on the dates. So if you're taking out someone under age, I'm sure there is some kind of paperwork saying, okay, why? Is he yours? Are you his father? Are you his next of kin? Are you, um, have, what do they call it? Um, custodial. Are you the custodial parent? You have custody of this child. When his father died, maybe Tim got custody. I don't know who got custody of the young man of the baby when his daddy died. But again, they requested paperwork that was not sent back. So, a year prior to that, so I'm assuming the baby was like 15, 16, maybe 16, 70, he tried to take out a $250,000 policy on him and that was declined by that insurance company coming from the Daily Mail. Now we all know, or maybe some of us don't know, ooh, readjusting myself, that Tim has, has, has a history uh, with the law. He was arrested for armed robbery and served 10 years in prison, right? That was issued on the show. That was talked about on the show. Also, in 2018, he was charged with a misdemeanor assault, allegedly punching a former employee in the face. Now, why you want to punch a former employee? I don't, I don't know why, but... And then in 2019, a Houston-based company sued him for... Uh, sued him over uh, unpaid rent totaling $254,000. Bitch, what kind of house do you have? I know restaurant money is good, and I know that Oprah money is good, and I know Sweetie Pie money is good, but y'all, to my, to, for, in my mind, y'all ain't bought. What kind of place do you have to where you have $254,000 of unpaid? Now, this is not restaurant. This is rent. Rent. Now, maybe they let you coast because of who you are and being on TV. You know, sometimes they let the famous people coast and do all that good stuff. And that, you know, everybody, every business has a breaking point. Bitch, they want their money. But, a Houston-based company sued them for $254,000 of unpaid rent. And then later that same year, the Plaza Building in Jackson, Mississippi, said that, that he owes them $100,000 for a... Uh, store, a Sweetie Pie store that was there that he never paid rent on. Now, further in the article, I guess uh, through the legal depositions, he said he was withholding rent because there were, uh, um, what is the word, there was um, things that needed to be fixed that the building wasn't fixing, so he opted with, to withhold rent. 
I don't know if that's true or not. So ultimately, you're talking about $354,000 that Tim owed to creditors. And from what I also read in another article that Ms. Robbie uh, had some kind of legal issue with her son because he was opening up restaurants that he didn't have authority to open. I don't know if that's true or not. That is alleged based on what I read. But I'm going to say this. I love my family, right? I love my family. And I know some parents can be very blind to their children about what they will and will, what their children can and cannot do with, oh, my child would never do this, never do this. And some parents are very like, I know my children. I know my children very well. I, my mama, my mama literally tell, tells me, I know, I know all my three kids. I know what you gonna do, what you will and will not do. I know what your sister will and will not do. And I know what your brother will and not do. Now, I don't put nothing past you. But I know my kids, you know what I'm saying? And so I, I, it makes me wonder, it's like, okay, was Miss Robbie, you know, Miss Robbie's up in the air, I think she's about 80. Now, I don't know what her health is like. I don't know what her mind is like. You know, sometimes all, all hymas and dementia and some things set in and you just kind of, you know, you, you hope that your family would do, by, do right by you and do right by your business. But ain't no way. My son that's been in, in prison for 10 years for armed robbery, you can't manage my business. You can't manage my business. You can't. You can't come. You can't have access to the uh, to the rich. Now I love you. You are my son. You will be always be the apple of my eye. But no, 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 no. You can't come into my business. You can't be part of the business. Not management team. Now I can. You know. You can be a server. You can be a cook. You know. Maybe even a supervisor. But any real power to where we're dealing with money and and and. P&L's profits and loss and all that, uh -uh, you, can't, you can't do that because you already have a track record and I like my business. I like my branding. I like being above the fray. So you, you, you can't do that. Now you can always get a free meal. You will never go hungry. All this food we got right here, you can come right here and get you a plate. You ain't got to worry about it, baby. But no, 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 don't ask me to be, no, 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 no. I love you, son. You want to do what? You want to be mad? Oh, no. Oh, no, baby. No, baby. Now, bless your heart. But no. You're the apple of my eye. But you're the stain in my pocket. No, 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 no. So, ain't no way for me that I will let, you know, don't mean I love you no less. But being smart is being smart. You have a brand. You have an entity. You have a national, worldwide brand. Thanks to own and the Oprah Winfrey Network and Oprah Winfrey. And to have somebody that has a track record for armed robbery. And it must have been something the way you spent 10 years in jail. And I'm sure that was probably a plea deal. I'm sure you didn't go to trial and they found you with 10 years. You probably played down. So they were probably trying to give you 25 years or 15, 17 years. And you played down to 10. So what you stole, I, I didn't dig that deep. I guess that is public record. I could go in dig deep for it, but I'm not. I'm not that in, in, in invested. But ain't no way that I'm going to put you in charge of my business. Now, both of them are sitting in jail. I don't know who tipped them off. Uh, Ms. Robert always said that she felt that her grandson's murder was... Um, was set up that it was a uh, 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 it wasn't just coincidental or accident, um, but I wonder if she like again back did she know that her son was capable of that? Do you, does, does her son did she know did did she know that her son was capable of that? So now you got one son dead from murder. You have a grandson that was murdered allegedly murdered by your son. When they convict him, he going away for life, and I and I'm not sure. It's a federal charge, so this is the United States against you. So depending on what, I don't know if, I know states have a right for capital punishment. I don't know if the feds have a right for capital punishment. So you could be going away for, I'm saying minimally life. Um, or death penalty. I'm not sure federals uh, can do death penalty. Uh, so now Ms. Ms. Robbie is left all alone. I saw in the, that she has siblings. I didn't click to see if her siblings are still alive. But Miss Robin, 80 years old, so her siblings got to be up in that. I don't see them being no 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 younger than 60. And if she is the youngest sibling at 80, they up there. If they still down here, 
because they might be literally up there. Uh, so, um, it's a sad situation. It takes a special motherfucker to murder, allegedly murder his nephew. I love my Uncle Bob. I love my Uncle Tony. I love my Uncle Myron. I have some. I have a wonderful family. I would never think as much as I may have pissed off my uncle that I would have done something so heinous to make them want to murder. They may want to beat my ass. They may want to debo me, bitch. Break a, uh, you know, break break my chin or a uh, uh, black in the eye, or something like that. You know, in my younger days, now in my younger days, because I had a little mouth on me, but not to the point to where they wanted to murder for hire to kill little old me. So it takes a special motherfucker to do something like that. Um, I can't, I ain't got no heaven or hell to put nobody in, but it is, it's, bitch, you sad, you sad. So that is roughly the spiel of what's going on with um, James Timothy Norton, Norman, whatever the bitch name is. May he rot up under the jail if this is true. I, don't, I wouldn't see why the police would lie. Um, well, let me not say that. Let me not. <laughs> I recant that statement, bitch. That's another. Uh, I recant that. That is from Law and Order as well, bitch. I, I can see how the police could lie. But in this situation, I don't. I, anyways, the, the motherfuckers lied too. But anyways. So, again, this is your boy, D. Sebastian Alexander. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Royally Fucked here on YouTube and here on um, Anchor. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. Share this, get it out to your people. Subscribe. There should be two videos right here. There should be a subscribe button right here. And there's gonna be an email down here. I'm opening a new segment saying, ask his royal highness. Um, you can email me at, at royallyfucked at gmail.com and it's not, it's not traditionally spelled, so I'm gonna spell it out for you so you can see it down here at the bottom. Email me your questions. I will give you my best, best advice. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and so with that being said, this is your boy, His Royal Highness, D. Sebastian Alexander Bonet. Have a great day. Peace, much love. Holla at you later. Bye.